So during this lockdown, um, I've been doing a few webinars for uh, Delamar Academy. Uh, so far we've done 1920s, 1940s, 50s, 60s, and so today I'm gonna do 1970s. Um, there were so many different looks of the 1970s that it was just easier to do it um, in this format rather than live, just because um, it really ranged from long uh, straight hair of the sort of hippie um, beginning of the decade through to shimmery glossy lips um, of the sort of disco era through to then the sort of tanned healthy uh, glamorous looks of uh, the Californian um, actresses like Farrah Fawcett Majors, Charlie's Angels um, and then it ended uh, with the um, anti-fashion anti-establishment uh, uh, statement of, of punk so um, lots to see um, in the 1970s that we're going to be seeing in this video. So what I want you to think about uh, with the looks that I've done today um, is that I've done sort of iconic glamorous looks uh, but it's not necessarily how the ev everyday woman was wearing her makeup in the 70s. Uh, there would be little elements of it so there might be a little bit of the eyeshadow, uh, the shape of an eyebrow, uh, the glossy lips for example and and thinking about hair shapes um, but it's really important that you refer to um, historically accurate reference photographs to make sure that you are properly representing the the true face of 1970 uh, with whatever you're doing um, the age of uh, the person that you're uh, working on is really important uh, because they might be where if they were slightly older they would be possibly wearing looks that um, filtered down from the 1960s uh, and again if you were sort of maybe in a in a city you'll have sort of more high fashion looks for the younger the, the younger person um, so it's really important it's like today not everybody's walking around with an Instagram makeup face uh, day in day out and obviously um, differences with the 1970s was that uh, younger girls didn't wear probably quite so much makeup as they do today so I just wanted to note uh, that this is obviously being filmed during lockdown so things are limited to me um, and so uh, just to take that into consideration um, I've got two lovely models uh, my daughter Sophia and my niece Molly um, so luckily I've got those uh, lovely faces to work on um, but Molly has got piercings um, she's got a nose ring uh, which wouldn't be technically correct um, so these again things to really think about uh, with whoever you were doing um, to make sure it was a true representation of the era so please just kind of airbrush um, Molly's nose ring out of your mind until we get to the punk I just want to add as well that all the necessary measures have been taken to make sure that all my products have been sanitized before uh, we started and uh, as well as hands and my models have um, had their skin prepped and primed uh, before um, I began any of the looks so 1970s reference photographs here, uh, following on from Woodstock in 1969, lots of hippie looks uh, and Ali McGraw here in 1970 in Love Story, uh, long straight centre parting hairstyles, natural makeups. Um, from the early part of the decade. Here we have Jane Fonda. She um, is sporting a haircut here called the shag. So lots of layers, longer at the back. Um, this became uh, popular, as did Afro. Afros were really sported in the 1970s, big hair. 1973, this is uh, David Bowie as Aladdin Sane's uh, album cover. Um, so men were wearing makeup again. 1974, um, ABBA won the Eurovision Song Contest um, and I'll be showing um, some ABBA looks uh, and there's some uh, lots of blue eyeshadow uh, that will be going on with, um, with looks that I'm going to be demoing um, and here's some reference pictures um, from that time um, of Agnetha from uh, and this is what we're going to be doing a little bit later. There was also a big um, 1920s Art Deco revival in the early, 20, in the early 70s. Um, 
Twiggy was in The Boyfriend, uh, Liza Minnelli, Mia Farrow, Thin Eyebrows, um, and Bieber also sort of introduced um, this kind of like doll-like makeup. There we are, and that's a Vogue cover uh, showing you the no eyebrows and the sort of 20s influence. We then went into big hair, uh, Jerry Hall, um, Farrah Fawcett Majors, um, who was um, in Charlie's Angels. Uh, There we are with uh, more curls, big curls. Twiggy on a Vogue cover there, uh, showing all these voluminous curls. And Jacqueline Smith from Charlie's Angels there again with uh, big hair. Lots of um, heated rollers, tongs, blow dries. Then we went into 1976 uh, with the wedge cut. Uh, So this was a very popular look of the 1970s. Um, And this was uh, an American um, ice skater here. That's my mum, who was also sporting that look around that time. See all these flicks. There was a real art to getting these uh, these big flicked hairdos. Um, But you did need those layers. Also, 1976, John Frieda cut Joanna Lumley's hair into the Purdy haircut. This was her character in The the Avengers, um, and that became a very popular look of the 70s. Another iconic look here, just of uh, really strong eye makeup, strong eyes, strong blusher, strong lips. And here we have a 1970s Top of the Pops uh, screen grab and there's lots of different hairstyles you can see that we've just been talking about then we went into 1976 onwards uh, of the punk revival that's Vivian Westwood on the far right and she influenced all these kind of pink punk looks um, of uh, the late 70s Susie Sue here so I'll be doing a look which is um, has got these kind of flavours um, of, the, of the punk movement um, with uh, really strong eyes, uh, strong lips, stripy blusher. So let's start with our fir- first look with Molly. So on Molly here, um, I'm using a painterly MAC paint pot uh, all over her eyelids as an eye primer. Um, If you don't have anything like this, you can just use foundation and a powder or any eye primer, uh, but it just gives a nice base for your eye shadow and it helps the intensity of the colour and it helps prevent any creasing, Um, particularly if you've got a long filming day, um, it just helps everything last for much longer. So after the eye primer, um, I'm putting on um, a shimmery eyeshadow in a cream or whitey cream uh, shade, taking it right um, all over the eyelid up to the eyebrow. So next I'm applying a sky blue powder eyeshadow, shimmery eyeshadow, and I'm taking it um, over the the lid and blending it up. You'll find that there'll be some photographs where the eyeshadow is taken quite high. Um, I'm just sort of taking it up and sort of blending it out over the uh, socket line. stage is the foundation I'm applying this with a brush um, and this is a cream foundation lots of cream liquid foundations from the 1970s to give a nice healthy glow uh, so I've done my foundation after eyeshadow just in case there was any sort of blue droppage on the skin um, but it doesn't really matter which way round you do it um, but you really want to achieve a nice natural foundation um, nothing that's going to be too heavy 
I'm just going in now with a little sponge and just applying any corrector, um, concealer and just evening out the foundation and the base and then I will be blending down into the neck as we go on with some bronzer um, but I'm just using a small brush and applying a concealer anywhere where I may need to add a little bit more coverage uh, for any dark circles under the eyes or any blemishes any little imp imperfections but again not not making it too heavy I was in the man but there was still no way so the next step is just applying a little bit of powder um, I really am only applying it in the t-zone and just a little bit under the eyes I don't want it to be too flat and matte so um, it's just really just to set that foundation um, around the nose under the eyes and in that in that uh, more oily t-zone and then then the next step is applying cream blusher applying it onto the apples of the cheek and blending it up the cheekbone so again keeping it natural so it all looks lovely and natural and glowy so the next step is to apply bronzer uh, because for this look I want it to look uh, really healthy uh, really bronzed so we've got a slight peachy um, undertone going on with the cream blusher uh, but I'm now blending down my bronzer down the neck just to make sure that the, all the colours um, continue down into the neck area and around the nose uh, all around the hairline and to give a little bit more um, on the on the cheekbones So here I'm just applying a little bit of highlighter along the top of the cheekbone just to give a nice glow and then here I'm adding some um, coal some bright blue coal pencil and I'm blending that with a small brush uh, so I'm pushing that right into the bottom lashes and blending it right away um, along and then just to the outside edge not winging it out too much but I'm now going to put a little bit along the top lashes just to really make that blue pop Adding some black mascara onto the bottom lashes and then onto the top. Adding some nice definition, but not the strong definition of the 1960s where they had lots of false eyelashes. Um, false lashes were still used in the 1970s, but not in the way that they were in the 60s. So early, early 70s, you would have had a few more um, people wearing lashes as they started to uh, change the, um, the the styling of the makeup but here we're just putting a little bit of mascara for intensity so eyebrows uh, I'm brushing the eyebrows up um, and smoothing them into shape uh, 1970s eyebrows tended to be quite thin particularly at the early part of the decade um, uh, but then sort of graduated to being quite natural. Uh, so you would have had women in the um, in the 70s that actually did pluck their eyebrows quite extensively, uh, much to their regret further down the line um, when they didn't grow back again. But um, you'll find that if you look at photographs, reference pictures from the 70s, 
you will have um, some looks which have got very thin eyebrows and others uh, where um, they're just a little bit more natural uh, certainly not like they are today I'm just penciling in here with a little bit of powder just to give a little bit more shape to them um, but um, it's not a big statement eyebrow in the 1970s this look I'm just doing a nice pinky lip gloss I haven't used any um, lip liner uh, I'm just applying lip gloss all the way over just to give um, some nice shine this is something that is a typical look of the of the 70s lots of shine glossy lips So the next step is I'm just putting a little wig on uh, Molly and so I prepared her hair uh, with um, wrapping her hair underneath uh, a wig cap and on goes an acrylic wig. Uh, in lockdown there's not a huge amount available to us but this um, is very, very similar to the ABBA Agnita look. So uh, this is the kind of look that I was going for uh, with, I'll show you reference pictures. Um, so I'm just brushing this out and giving the fringe a nice little flick, uh, which she tended to have. So here we are with our final look. Um, and it's a little homage to ABBA when they won uh, with Waterloo, uh, the Eurovision Song Contest in 1974. So for the second look, I've kept the foundation uh, from look one um, and taken off the blue eyeshadow and I'm now adding a tawny brown cream eyeshadow, blending it all over the lid. So the next step is I'm just using a little bit of dark brown eyeshadow and I'm winging it out um, on the outer corner of the eye and just blend it, blending it into the socket line. So I'm now taking the bronze coal along the bottom lashes. Uh, I haven't actually taken it into the waterline, but I've just smudged it along the bottom lashes and using a clean brush, I'm just blending that color um, to uh, just soften it. So here I'm using a bronzer um, along the cheekbones, I've just taken it into the brow just slightly um, and just giving this nice healthy bronze look again, just, just building on what was already there um, and just adding a little bit more intensity to the, to the blusher. So 
finishing the look with a bronze metallic -y lipstick. A little bit glossy, but it's got a little bit of uh, a metallic -y shimmer to it. So I'm just finishing off the lips. Um, you'll notice that I haven't actually used any lip, lip liner. Not that lip liner wasn't used, but um, glosses were often just used on their own um, or from the, from the bullet. Um, so I haven't used any lip liner on this one. For this look, um, again, another little acrylic wig that I'm using. Um, and in the 1970s, 1976 in fact, uh, John Frieda did um, uh, an iconic haircut on Joanna Lumley for her character role in The Avengers. She played a character called Purdy. And it was a, a very sort of sharp, um, bowl cut. Um, and this um, is... The closest that I could find um, that I had in lockdown, uh, but it was um, it was similar to to this kind of shape, uh, and it was all smooth and uh, brushed into uh, perfect shape. So 1976 as well uh, was a year when um, the wedge cut uh, was also very popular, page boys and wedge cuts. Um, so lots of short hairstyles in the 70s, uh, difficult to do uh, with um, models that have got long straight hair with no layers uh, in their hair. Um, so this is what I'm just doing is just getting a little bit of a flick uh, from the acrylic wig. So here we are with our finished look, uh, number two, uh, with our little flicked wedge, our purdy look that became a wedge. Here we are with look three. Um, what I'm doing is I'm just intensifying uh, the bronzed makeup that I did uh, for the purdy look. Uh, so I'm using a dark brown coal pencil and just running it along the bottom lashes and blending it out and up. Um, in the 1970s, there was a real sort of cat eye look, uh, and it was taken right winged out, and there was almost like a little triangle section uh, of eyeshadow, which you'll see me do in just a minute uh, along the top. Uh, first of all, I'm just adding this um, coal uh, along the top lashes to join up and wing out. Uh, and then I'm going to just build up um, the dark brown in the corner of the eye uh, and give that a sort of cat, cat eye, strong, glam look. So this is much more of a glam 1970s look that we're doing here. Um, and you'll see that there were, you know, a lot of these um, sort of disco looks, um, Studio 54, um, Manhattan um, looks. Uh, which were all kind of very glamorous, shimmery, glossy um, and strong eyes, strong lips, strong blusher um, and the three kind of all went together uh, and this is something that we're doing on this look. So I'm just adding some uh, bronze eyeshadow onto the eyelid now just to make the, uh, the eyes much stronger uh, and make that eyelid really kind of pop. So 
So I'm now applying highlighter under the brow bone uh, and this would be quite shimmery uh, and so I'm just really building that up and blending that out. This is the point when I'm now just adding in the darker brown eyeshadow into that socket line and blending it out and uh, right along inside to the corners and out and winging it out. up underneath the eyes just to add a little bit more base and concealer just to uh, really give a nice clean finish. So just adding a little bit of powder just to finish off uh, in that area where I've just added a little bit more base and on the chin there um, just to take away any of that shine in that T-zone. So here I'm just adding more blusher um, along the top of the cheekbones, blending that out and again on the, in the 1970s uh, blusher was quite strong and it could be a little bit stripy at times um, and remember we've got quite sophisticated with how we do our um, foundation and our blushes and uh, contours now um, but you know you don't want to make it too modern day um, too current uh, the look you have to kind of remember as well you know the makeup techniques of what they would have done in the 70s to make it look really authentic <music> So I'm just adding some mascara just to finish off the eyes. Uh, I could add lashes at this point. Um, I haven't actually on this look, but uh, this would be the point after you've um, done your mascara that you would add lashes if you wanted to really glam this up. So after blotting the bronze lipstick down, I'm just adding some red lip liner and we're going to do a really strong red glossy lip uh, to finish this look.
So here we are with red lips and lots of gloss. So I'm just finishing off this look with one of uh, Delamar's wigs. Uh, it hasn't got great hair lace because it's obviously used by the students, so it's not intended to be used um, in TV and film. Um, but it um, gives you an idea of the kind of like glam look of the 19, 1970s, where uh, they would have uh, women would have obviously set their hair on heated rollers to give them lots of root lift and curl. So here we are with our final look, uh, very glam, set on heated rollers, um, lots of movement, lots of volume, uh, maybe legs and co on top of the pops. So for the final look with Molly, um, we're doing punk. The one era where her nose ring is going to fit in. Uh, we've done every other era on these um, webinars um, and uh, on this 1970s one. Uh, this is the only one where actually her, uh, her, all her pierces, <laughs> piercings come into play. Um, so just beware, just beware of that when you're actually doing a makeup. Um, that you are really conscious of the fact that somebody needs to be accurate in the far as piercings and tattoos um, that it fits the uh, the area of what you're doing um, so obviously for artistic license we have found that um, uh, we've used her, her nose piercing um, but um, actually it's obviously not uh, what you would um, have on any supporting artist or any artist um, unless it happened to be uh, probably uh, punk era and beyond. Um, so 1976 and 1977 is uh, the punk movement, um, sort of a real anti-fashion statement um, and exploding into sort of street culture. Uh, there were um, whole new looks um, emerging with white pasty faces so I'm using here um, a paler base on Molly uh, than I was on the uh, on the previous looks um, so I'm just um, evening out her skin tone but I've given her a much um, lighter foundation than I did on the sort of healthier look that I did um, on, the, on the looks one two and three <laughs> So here on the eyeshadow, I'm just doing uh, my MAC paint pot as a base because I'm going to be using quite a lot of um, coloured eyeshadows. So I just want this to last and um, just to give more intensity to the colours again that I'm going to be using on Molly. So this is a MAC um, painterly on there. And then I'm going over it with um, a white eyeshadow. I'm taking it all the way over the lid and up over, up to the eyebrow. Mm -hmm. 
So moving on to the eyeshadow, there's no rules with any of this makeup. Um, it really would be um, stylized from yourself as to how you wanted to design your eye makeup. Um, so I'm just using this flamingo pink eyeshadow into the socket line and just winging, winging it out. Um, mainly it's more about it being a fairly tribal war paint. So I'm now using a black coal, uh, so uh, black um, eyebrow pencils, black coals, uh, they would have been used um, at this point um, to really give a statement eye. Uh, I'm using it to sort of really square off the eyebrows, uh, but there was really nothing artful about punk um, and about the application. So in a way, much as your tendency probably is to sort of want to make it really beautiful, um, because again, we are sort of quite good at putting makeup on these days. Um, actually, the punk movement, um, you wouldn't have really had anything that was terribly um, stylish. Um, it was really just um, application in quite its raw sense. So a little bit of inspiration really for this look probably came from Susie Sue. Um, but um, there's, if you go online, you'll be able to see lots of um, images of uh, women from um, street images of different makeup looks and all of them would be different. Um, you've got people like Debbie Harry um, who hers wasn't quite as stylized as this but she was also kind of part of that um, early punk scene um, that was a little bit more glamorous uh, but Malcolm McLaren godfather of punk and designer Vivian Westwood um, they were the ones that really created this look uh, so um, these were all looks really to scare um, so there was nothing sort of too beautiful about any of it here I'm just uh, bringing the um, eyeliner all along um, the top lashes and I'm just bringing it right on in the inside corner of the eye and down towards the nose and um, I am just blending this out So the black eyeliner then continues along uh, the bottom lashes. I'm taking it into the, into the waterline here, uh, and I'm just taking it and taking it out wide and winging it out a little bit. So here I'm just adding some purple eyeshadow, blending that into uh, the bright pink that I've got on there, just to get these different tones. There were lots of colours that would have been used, acid yellows, electric blues, neon greens, um, as well as just blacks, blacks, whites, um, so anything went. So I'm applying some pink uh, blusher here. Uh, again, really strong and uh, in quite a stripe along the cheekbone. Um, probably not as heavy as you often see in photographs, in fact. Uh, so it really was a sort of quite a statement stripe of, of colour on the cheeks. So I'm finishing the look here with some 
uh, pink lipstick uh, because I've done quite a strong um, quite strong very strong eyes um, I'm just um, I'm still doing sort of a fairly strongish pink here uh, but in actual fact you quite often will look at photographs and you'll see a really um, strong lipstick in reds or blacks uh, and often used with um, lip liners and sometimes in contrasting colours. So for Molly's hair, uh, I'm just going to put some back comb in. I'm going to use some crimpers, uh, which were would have been used in the 70s as well. Um, helps to give um, some uh, texture to the hair. Uh, and gel and hairspray would have been the friend of a punk. look with some pink hairspray uh, just on the ends lots of colours, bleaches dyes would have been used in the punk um, looks with hair uh, so here we are, Molly with Attitude and her piercings so for this look um, I'm just applying foundation to Sophia uh, this is going to be a sort of a real kind of no makeup look um, as in like the Ali McGraw uh, 1970s love story uh, film look uh, and lots of girls were adopting this look with um, their long straight hair uh, centre partings and very natural kind of makeups um, so I'm just doing a light base uh, Sophia's actually got um, a much lighter face to her body actually so um, it's always looks a little bit warmer on her but it all comes together once uh, you the, the body is revealed and this is something that you always have to be slightly aware of uh, with makeup sometimes uh, that you match to um, you know the whole the whole body uh, so I've just put a little bit of um, light foundation on um, as you will have seen in uh, previous looks and just um, softening areas adding little bits of uh, concealer um, smoothing out um, just so that it's looking like a nice natural skin uh, without it looking too heavy. I'm then just applying a little bit of cream blusher onto the apples of the cheeks again just to give like a nice natural flush so this is in a sort of peachy, uh, pinky glow and a little bit of powder uh, just to set but uh, nothing that's going to be too heavy. Um, so it's just for us just to sort of take a little bit of shine off. I'm then adding uh, a little bit of mascara. Not, not anything that's going to be too heavy but just give a little bit of definition to the eyes. So uh, top and bottom lashes in either a brown or a black um, but it's it's just literally just to give that that little bit of definition without it looking too done up I'm just doing a little smudge of uh, colour just uh, and, and very natural light brown underneath the um, bottom lashes uh, which was just again just to just make it look like a natural um, shadow rather than anything to make up and a little brush of the eyebrows there uh, just getting them into shape again early 70s they were quite thin quite often um, and they would have been possibly plucked uh, so um, I'm just giving them a little bit more shape but just making them look nice and fine. Finishing off the look I'm just doing a tiny bit of lip liner which is mainly just to help the top lip just because Sophia's got a slightly weaker top lip to a bottom lip um, so it's just to give her a little bit of shape there. Um, but I don't want it to be obvious. 
Um, so I'm just blending that in and adding a little bit of gloss. So it was a nice natural gloss uh, that was again nothing too obvious um, but just give her a little sheen on her lips and then just brushing her hair through um, so keeping it down middle parting was very popular um, and straight uh, so you found that uh, most women would have ended up just probably um, washing their hair leaving it natural keeping you around that's why I go how it ends is just the worst part I was in the man but there was still no way How was I? So with this look um, I'm using a nice green eyeshadow on Sophia, uh, which was very popular in the 1970s. Um, and I'm applying this over the prepped eye already that we did in the previous look. Um, so I'm just blending this up. And you'll see that quite often in photographs, it was taken quite high up towards the eyebrow. Um, but I'm just sort of blending it up. Um, and then um, I'll put a little bit of highlight above that. And because the um, eyeshadow was quite matte actually, I didn't have a, anything that was that shimmery um, in my kit. So I've just added um, a little bit of a, a cream shimmer eyeshadow over the top of the, um, the green, just to give it that nice kind of glossy, um, pearlized kind of look that was often uh, used in little um, eyeshadow palettes that you would have bought um, in the 1970s. So after the eyeshadow, I'm just using um, a green coal pencil and I'm running that along the top lashes, uh, not winging it out too much, but just to give a little bit more uh, definition to the eye, a bit like the blue um, eyeshadow that I did before, but this time we're doing it in the greens, um, but it just intensifies that green colour. And there were lots of coloured coals um, available in the 1970s. Sophia's hair has already been prepped, um, so we've put these bendy rollers in um, uh, just to curl her hair for, uh, for this and the uh, following look. Um, so um, I've already prepped that, so it's now sitting and baking. Then I'm using this um, green pencil just underneath the bottom lashes, just running it again right towards the inside of the eye and then with a clean brush, just smoothing that out uh, and just blending that away. So it's not, nothing too hard and heavy, um, but just a nice kind of smudge of green. So here we're then just applying some mascara. I'm gonna use lashes on this uh, particular look. So um, giving her quite a nice base coat of uh, black mascara uh, on the top and bottom lashes. And here we are now just applying. I'm actually using individuals uh, because I didn't have any strip lashes that really were the sort of more natural shape that I, uh, that I wanted. Um, uh, so unlike the 60s where they might have used several strips at once or a really sort of thick um, thick eyelash, this is a little bit more natural. So um, I've just put some little individuals on just to give a sort of, like I say, a sort of real open eye uh, look to this, um, to this particular look that we're doing now. them with um, the tweezers and then after they've um, settled in I'm just going back over and just intensifying the, uh, the lashes with another little bit of mascara. So after I've finished with the mascara I'm just going over just tidying up the base um, just to just add a little bit more 
um, than I had on that sort of previous look, which was quite natural. Um, so I'm just um, evening things out, a little bit of concealer here and there, uh, and just, um, yeah, just tidying it up. And then I've got a little bit of cream blusher, which I'm applying with the brush here um, along the cheekbone and a little tiny sponge, which I'm just blending that out. So uh, just making that really nice and dewy, um, just so that it looks nice and natural. the hair's already been prepped. I'm just adding a little bit of powder here uh, just on top of um, that cream blusher and the base and then just tidying up the, the brows a little bit of um, brushing them into shape again and if there's any powder on them from um, what I've just been doing that brushes that away and intensifying them a little bit with um, a little bit more of the eyebrow pencil, matching eyebrow pencil, just to give that nice, polished, thin eyebrow of the 70s. Final look is to add uh, some coral lip gloss. So just adding that on there. Taking the bendy rollers out that have been baking um, and uh, they are brilliant at being, being able to create lots of really good curls, particularly on Sophia's hair that's very long. Um, so I'm just sort of brushing it out with my hands. Um, I'm trying not to use the brush too much on it because uh, I don't want to brush too much of the curl out for the, for the final look, which I, was, which I follow uh, with. So here I'm just now placing it into um, a little bun at the back and I've taken out lots of tendrils around the front of the face and around the nape of the neck uh, just to give a very soft look. So here we have the final look, uh, so it's a pretty little updo with lots of tendrils around the, the front of the face and the nape um, and it's quite similar to the twiggy look um, that was in the early 70s uh, that I've shown in the reference section. So for this final look I'm just applying um, a paint pot um, cream eye base just because I'm going to be using quite a lot of uh, powder eyeshadows so it gives a really good base um, for that. So on top of there I'm then applying a really shimmery uh, pearlized eyeshadow and that's going all the way from the lashes up to the eye, um, eyebrow. <laughs> Um, nicely applied uh, we're then coming into the the cat eye and the the darker brown contour into the crease line um, and blend it out into a sort of wing from the outside edge um, and I'm doing that obviously on the second side here and then I'm going to just go over and blend that away and just make sure that that's really softly um, applied but um, giving lots of definition and really sort of being very dramatic in that eye shape because this is a much stronger um, evening look um, that maybe you would have seen on Jerry Hall in some of the reference photographs um, that I've shown the sort of disco the 1970s kind of disco look so uh, nice and shimmery um, and really strong with that definition. So you can see I'm just adding a little bit more strength there into the corner of the, um, the outside corners and along the lash line. The difference actually with this kind of look to maybe what we might have done uh, today is that we would have then come in with 
say uh, a black gel eyeliner and uh, and really um, done a nice graphite eyeliner but obviously this is the difference with the 70s is that they, they didn't do that so much might have used a black coal pencil but um, uh, it's the sort of the, set, the shape of what a lot of looks are today, but um, but without that graphite eyeliner on the top. So I've tidied up with a little bit of base, and I've gone back in now uh, with my powder just to set that base, um, and just in case there was any sort of droppage that was uh, underneath, just giving that little tidy up, um, and just really polishing up the the foundation in the 1970s you would have had liquid cream uh, powder um, foundations um, the max factor cream puff was still popular so um, some people would have maybe just still used that now I'm coming in with um, a brown coal pencil and this time I'm going into the waterline and just blending it along the bottom lashes to really intensify this look and then I'll just use a, a clean brush and blend that out and into that cat eye um, little triangle shape at the outer edges. And I'll clean up with cotton buds and there's the finished eye shape. So um, I'm just finishing it off with a, a little bronze um, eyeliner, which I'm now coming in, uh, goldy bronze, that I'm just uh, adding in just to give those disco vibes, that golden look. And adding a little bit of powder blusher on top of the cream blusher that was there from the first look. So uh, again, brushing it down along the cheekbones and strengthening that blusher look. Nice and shimmery and uh, bronzed with a little bit of powder highlighter there on the top of the cheekbone. This look I'm going to make it a much stronger lip liner um, so uh, I'm putting some um, eyeliner on just to give a bit of shape uh, to Sophia's lip again uh, but just a slightly stronger color and then um, I'm gonna add in uh, an orangey lip lipstick and then on top of that I'll be adding more gloss because gloss was was the look for the 70s. I remember myself in the um, in the 1970s. It's probably one of the first makeup items that I probably bought. It was a rollable uh, flavored lip gloss. we've done that we're going to take down the hair hopefully the curls are still there uh, that I had set from the bendy rollers um, and taking out from the ponytail just raking through with an afro comb there um, and the look of the uh, of this sort of studio 54 disco look uh, was um, big hair big hair lots of curls lots of volume I've just added a couple more bendies in there where I think it's got a bit straight um, on a couple of sections. So uh, that's what you're seeing me doing there. Uh, and just really pulling the hair out and giving it lots of volume. We didn't have the products that we've got today in the 70s. The serums and things that we didn't that we, that we um, have got now wouldn't have been around. Um, but um, there we are with the final finished look uh, a la... Jerry Hall, Twiggy, there's various looks on the reference pictures that sort of um, suggest this, this final look. So there we are, there's all the final looks. Um, so many other looks that we could do, so many other looks that I think um, there are of the, of the 70s, but so many of them are um, hair cuts. 
uh, which involve lots of sort of layered, maybe slightly shorter looks, which you know we weren't really able to do um, in in lockdown at the moment. But hopefully you've enjoyed all of this. If there's any questions, please um, message me. Um, I'm on um, at Nikki Hamby on Instagram, um, and uh, I am open to anything that you want to um, have a chat about. So um, yes, thank you very much for watching.